In this video, we're going to find out why eating a pizza is similar to hanging out in the desert. And we're going to talk about what happens when you do either one. Now we know that people are made up of about 70% water. And that water is both inside and outside cells. And so we can model the intracellular and extracellular fluid as a cell bathing in a cup of water. So this will be intracellular, this will be extracellular. Now there are some solutes in your body, both inside and outside the cell, which cannot travel through the membrane. We're going to draw that here in red. These are the red solutes. Of course, there are also solutes which can travel through the membrane, but we're not going to worry about them for now. And let's ask what happens if you go and hang out in the desert. So here you are in the desert. Here's a cactus. And what happens is you're going to get a little dehydrated. You're going to lose some water. It's going to evaporate, or maybe you'll breathe it out. So the level of the water will go down, and your cell will still be as big, for now at least. Here's your cell. And the level of solutes will be the same. So you'll have the same number inside and the same number outside. But now you'll notice that the concentration outside went up significantly because the outside fluid lost water. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a osmotic gradient that pushes water out of the cell, as we know. So here's your water. And now some of the fluid from inside the cell has gone out, and so the cell has lost volume. So now it's going to be a little scrunched up and less big than it was. It still has the same number of solutes in it. And now we have the same number of solutes outside, and the concentrations of the solutes that can't travel through the membrane is the same inside and outside. Now this happens to all the cells in your body when you go to the desert, and it's not a good state of affairs because they have decreased their size, which they don't like, because they work optimally at their normal size, and they've increased the concentration of solutes inside them. Now some cells in your body, and only some, can actually do something about this, and they're called osmoreceptors. Osmoreceptors. So they can see when their concentration is changing, and actually what they're seeing is the change in size, but as we see, these two things, concentration and size, really go hand in hand. Now these osmoreceptors are located in a special part of your body, and actually in the brain. So let's look at our brain. Here we have a brain, and the osmoreceptors are located in a part of the brain called the hypothalamus, which is around here in the midline. So this is the hypothalamus, and it's probably called the hypothalamus because it's like a small version of the thalamus. And so what are these cells going to be able to do about this change they've experienced? Well, they speak to the rest of the brain, and they send a strong message which says, please drink. So as a result of their message, you're going to try to go find some water and increase the amount of water in your body. But that's only the first thing that they do. So let's put a little number one. The other thing they do is they actually communicate with a little gland down here, in that little piece there, which is called the pituitary gland. Pituitary. And what they do, actually, is they send a signal through something like a neuron, which goes all the way down here to the pituitary gland and tells the pituitary gland to release a hormone called vasopressin. Vasopressin. And it's called vasopressin because it's going to help maintain the pressure in your vessels. So this is the second action that they're going to do. So where is the vasopressin going to go? Well, it's going to go into the blood vessels and down to the kidney. And it's going to tell the kidney, please conserve H2O. So the kidney needs to excrete a certain amount of waste, but it can do so with less water or more water, and this message is going to tell it to use less water. So now let's look at what happens if, instead of going to the desert, you decide to eat a pizza. You stay home and you eat a pizza, and that pizza has some tomato sauce on it, and it has some cheese, obviously, and it also has some anchovies. And actually, the reason why we're giving it anchovies is so that it is extra salty, because we want to see what happens when you eat something really salty. So this time, what's going to happen is you're not going to lose water. Here's your cup. It still has the same amount of water in it, and your cell is still floating around happily. But now, you're going to have much more solute in your extracellular fluid, because that's where you absorbed all this salt, all this sodium, which cannot pass through the membrane of the cell. So we're drawing it here in red. And you're going to have the same amount of solute inside the cell, 
because the sodium can't get in. And so now you can see that outside we have a much higher concentration of solutes. So once again, the same thing is going to happen. Water is going to go out of the cell towards the higher concentration. And therefore, the volume of the cell is going to decrease. And it's going to shrivel up again because it still has the same amount of membrane. And that is going to give you an equal concentration outside and inside. But it's going to result in a net increase in the concentration of the cell as well as a decrease in its size. So once again, we have a decrease in the size of the cell as well as an increase in the concentration of solutes in it. And I would just like to draw your attention to the fact that this is exactly the same as that. And so this cell doesn't know the difference. In both cases, it's decreased its size, increased its concentration. And so since this cell for now represents the osmoreceptor, it's going to send the same exact signals as it did up there.